So welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss about currency risk. So we will start from a basic problem and then we will step by step, we will go to a little bit advanced problem. So here, US dollar rate per pound is quoted as 1.4 and another rate is given 1.43. A company A wants to buy 1 lakh dollars in exchange for sterling and company B wants to sell 2 lakh dollars in exchange for sterling. What rate will the bank offer for each company? So, whenever you get a parity like this, it's usually like number is to 1 pound. Okay, so that is about the sterling or the pound. So, you will be like receiving or you have to pay 1.4325 or 1.4330 to a pound. So, at any time, you this is a rule. The rule is you have to pay more pay more local currency and you have to receive less local currency okay so this is the rule here so whenever you're going to uh, buy another currency when you are going to buy a foreign currency then you have to pay a lot of local currency whenever you're going to sell and receive a local currency you have to receive less of the local currency okay so that's about the rule here so we'll see how it works so we'll start from company a so company a wants to buy 1 lakh of dollars so how much should they pay should they pay this number or this number so we have to follow the rule the company wants to buy the foreign currency then it means that they have to pay more of local currency so let's see how it works so the question starts from how much sterling required okay so that is the question so the company requires one lakh dollars so should we divide or should we multiply so if you see here the dollar is a higher number when compared to the pound okay so if that is the case, then the pound should be lower than the dollar when we compute also. So the answer here, the pound should be a lower number because that is how the parity is. Okay. So should you multiply or divide? You should divide. So divided by which number? If you are going to divide it by 1.4325, you will get the pounds. So we will work out that. And we will also find out for this other parity number what would be the pound. So this answer comes to 69808. This answer comes to 69769. We want to buy the dollars. Okay. So we have to pay a, a lot of local currency. The local currency here is the pound. Okay. So whichever you whichever you take, you have to suffer a lot or you have to pay a lot. So this one is where you pay a lot of pound to get the sterling. So what happens is you have to suffer more because that is the rule. Pay more local currency to buy foreign currency. To buy a foreign currency, you have to pay more local currency. So that's how the first rule works. Let's see what happened for company B. So company B, how much again? How much sterling will be received? So that is the question. So the company has two lakh dollars and they are going to get sterling. So as usual, the sterling the dollar is a higher number and the sterling is a lower number. So when you also convert the dollar should be a higher number and sterling should be a lower number. So, obviously, it's going to be a divide. So, if you're going to divide, we'll be like getting these same answers. But which one we have to select? The rule is receive less local currency. We'll work out. So, it's 2 lakhs divided by 1.4325 and 1.4. 330. So we'll work out both. Answer comes to 1 
the 958 okay so that is pound this comes to 139616 okay so as you are going to sell the dollars and receive the sterling you have to receive less so that is the rule so where do you receive less you are going to receive less in this conversion okay so what happens is when you are going to buy foreign currency you have to pay more local currency you are going to sell the foreign currency you will be like receiving less of the local currency so that is how this problems work ensure that you understand this concept really well because this concept gets tested again and again in this chapter so we'll move on so we have another question which is similar to that calculate how much sterling exporters would receive or how much sterling importers would pay ignoring the bank's commission in each of the following situations if they were to exchange currency and sterling at spot rate a a uk exporter receives a payment from danish customer of 155000 of kroner so we'll work out the first one so here a uk exporter is receiving a payment so it is an income or he is going to receive foreign currency. If you are going to receive foreign currency, then what happens is, when you sell that foreign currency, you will receive, you should receive less local currency. Okay. So, that is how the concept works. So, we will again work it out. So, there are now two rates here. Okay. For Danish. So, we will work out. So, before working out, we will also find out that the Danish is always a higher number when compared to the pound. Okay. So, should we like divide or multiply? So, we should be like dividing the corner. Then only we will get a lower pound. So, what we will do is we will take D, 1,50,000. So, that is Danish currency divided by 9.434 or we have another option. We have 1,50,000 divided by 9.538 so we'll get both the answers pounds 15 899.9 we get for this 1572 6.5 okay so we have to receive less currency in which we will receive the less currency we receive less currency here so this should be is what this is what the bank would accept and will be like giving so when they convert they will be like receiving this amount so we'll move on to the next one so we'll think about the b a uk importer buys goods from japanese supplier and pays 1 million yen so this is the parity between the yen and the pound the yen is higher and the pound is lower so the pound number is always a lower number when compared to the yen so what we have to do is we have to divide so we'll divide and we'll get an answer this is an expense so hence we have to buy foreign currency and to buy the foreign currency we have to pay more local currency so how does this work so we'll start so the total yen is 10 lakhs or 1 million we will divide it by 168.65 of yen so that we will find out the pound to be received and we also do the same thing for the other parity number so the other parity number is 170.781 so the first number comes to 59.29 0.4 okay so as we have to buy we have to pay more of local currency that is the pound so this is the rate that the bank will fix so the bank will fix us 168.65 so when we see both the problems in the last one the rate was this and in this problem the rate is this okay so this is how you have to solve the problems we have to move to the next one so the next one we will move on to the interest rate parity so this formula is what is used to fix the forward rate through the interest rate parity formula so the formula works like this f0 equals to s0 into 
1 plus IC divided by 1 plus IB. So, F0 refers to the forward rate of the currency. IB represents the base currency. IC ref refers to the counter currency. So, S0 refers to the spot rate. Okay. So, that is how it works. We will see a uh, sum here. A treasurer can borrow in Swiss francs at 3% per annum or in the UK at 7% per annum. The current rate of exchange is 10 Swiss francs to a pound. What is the forward exchange rate for delivery in a year's time? Okay. So, as you are getting a lot of interest rate here. See, this is an interest rate. This 3% is an interest rate and the 7% is an interest rate and they want you to find out the forward rate. So, the formula assumes that you have to do the IRPT method. So, F0 equals to S0 into 1 plus I divided by 1 plus I. So, we will try to solve here. So, always follow this parity. If the parity is Swiss franc to the pound, Okay, so we'll take it as franc to the pound. So it is franc to the pound. So this number should also be franc to the pound. This number here, the interest rate in franc or interest rate in Swiss to the interest rate in UK. So we'll take the pound number here. Okay, pound interest here. So now we'll try to solve this formula. Well, the spot rate is 10 into the interest rate in Switzerland is 3%. So, you have to add 3% as a numerator here and for the denominator, you have to add the UK rate. So, the UK rate is 7%. So, we will solve it again here. So, equals to 10 into 1.03 divided by 1.07. That will give you the answer. So, the answer is 9.626. So, that is the rate. So, the rate would move actually to this. So, that's about the IRPT problem. We'll move to the next problem. So, here we have another IRPT problem, interest rate parity problem, okay, but it's a little bit different. So, the home currency of ACB O is the dollar. It trades with a foreign country whose currency is dinar. The following information is available. The spot rate is 20 dinar to a dollar, interest rate is 3% in the uh, dinar country and 7% in the foreign country. What is the 6 month forward exchange rate they are asking? So, again it is a F0 equals to S0 into 1 plus I divided by 1 plus I. The parity is referred in dinar to the dollar. So, it is dinar to the dollar. So, the forward also has to be dinar to the dollar. So, the numerator number interest rate should be dinar and the lower number should be interest rate should be in dollars. So, we will find, find out the answer for this. So, the spot rate is 20 into 1 plus what is the dinar interest rate? The dinar interest rate is 7 percent because he says the home currency of AACB is dollar. So, this is the US rate and this is the foreign country where the dinar is being like set. So, that is that rate. So, 1 plus 7 percent. So, divided by the interest in the home currency is 3 percent. But the question is, they are asking you 6 month uh, forward rate. So, this rate is per year. It is not about the six month it is a per full year rate what we want is only a six month rate so whatever number you have taken interest here divided by two first solve this then you can solve the interest rate so first we'll solve this one so it's 20 into one plus this will become 3.5 percent and the denominator will be one plus 1.5 percent so we'll solve it here it is equal to 20 into 
डिवाइडेड बाय 1.015 सो द आंसर कम्स टू 20.394 that's about the answer so we'll move on to the next question so this is a similar to question to the last one so again this is an irpt problem but here what they do is rather than asking you a one year or six months forward they are asking you a 90 day forward so here what you can do is you can take the interest rate in terms of 90 by 360 so that you will get a proportionate interest and then you can calculate so that's how this sum is worked out so you can try this on your own so we'll move on to the purchasing power parity so purchasing power parity formula works like this s1 equals to s0 into 1 plus hc divided by 1 plus hb so s1 refers to actually the expected future spot rate S0 refers to the current spot rate. HB refers to the inflation in country in which the spot rate is quoted. And HC is the inflation rate at the other country. At the other country. So, we will work out this problem. Dollar and sterling are currently trading at $1.72 to a pound. Inflation in the US is expected to grow at 3% but at 4% in the UK predict the future spot rate in one year's time so they are asking a future spot rate in one year's time so we'll start uh, s1 equals to s0 into 1 plus we can have the same i here we can have the same i here divided by 1 plus again you can put it on i so the concept works like this first look at what is the parity it is dollar to the pound so this number is given in dollar to the pound so this number should also be dollar to the pound so this interest rate should be dollar here and it should be pound here okay so that's how the formula has to be set so now it's very easy for us to solve so the spot rate is 1.72 into 1 plus what is the interest rate in what is the inflation rate in US the inflation rate in US is 3% and what is the inflation rate in UK it is 4% so we can easily solve it now 1.72 into 1.03 divided by 1.04 so solve this you will get the answer 1.70 so this is the dollar 1.70 to the pound okay so that's how it works the only difference between the interest rate parity and the purchasing power parity is in interest rate parity you will be having the interest and in purchasing power parity you will be like having the inflation numbers okay so even though they give you interest rate and inflation rate in purchasing power parity you have to take the inflation rate alone so that is the only difference between the two methods we'll move on to the next sum so here we'll be like discussing about the hedging with forwards so the current spot rate for us dollars against uk sterling is 1.4525 to 1.4535 dollars to a single pound and the one month forward rate is quoted like this a uk exporter expects to receive 4 lakh dollars in one month if forward exchange rate contract is used how much will be received in sterling okay so here what happens is the company is going to receive the foreign currency okay and they have to it's an income and they receive the foreign currency so foreign currency has to be sold okay it has to be sold so what happens when you sell you will be like receiving receiving less local currency you have to receive less local currency so whichever rate does that that is the rate you have to take as this is a forward mechanism you don't need to worry about the spot rate so spot rate is not at all required here what is required is the forward rate okay focus on the forward rate alone so forward rate is 1.4550 to 1.4565 
So which of these rates that has to be taken? Whichever gives you less local currency, take that. So we'll work out that in a minute. So 4 lakh divided by 1.4550 and again 4 lakh divided by 1.4565. Let's get the pound number. 274914 that is the number here we get 274630 so whenever we are going to get the dollar we have to sell it in the local we have to sell it so when we sell it we will get the local currency when we get the local currency we have to get the less local currency so which one gives the less this one so this is the rate which the bank will give us so that's about the hedging so whenever you have a hedge problem, don't worry about the spot rate, just consider the forward rate. So we'll move on to a money market hedge. So we'll start from an income problem. So to solve a money market hedge income problem, this is how it works. So our job is we are going to receive a foreign income and that income, uh, we are not very much sure what will happen in the future whether the rate will go up or down and whether it will create us a loss. So what we do here is, rather than waiting and then receiving the uh, foreign currency, we immediately receive the foreign currency. How do we do that? We are going to get that income in three months time or something, but we can't wait for that long. So today itself, today itself you go and borrow in the foreign country, convert it at the spot rate and bring it and deposit in the local country. Okay. To solve these kinds of problems, you always have to start from the foreign country because that's how the problems work. So here are a step-by-step -step mechanism that you can follow. We'll follow this with an explanation of a sum. So we'll start here. So money market hedge for an income. Liverpool PLC is now expecting a receipt of 9 lakh dollars in 6 months time. The company's treasurer has determined the following rate. A spot rate, a 3 month forward rate, 6 month forward rate. There are also some uh, US and sterling borrowing rate and deposit rate. These are annual numbers. Okay. These are annual numbers. Decide whether a forward contract hedge or a money market hedge should be undertaken. So, first we will start from the forward because that is the most easiest. So, forward hedge will be. Which number you have to take? It is a six months time. So take the six month forward rate, ignore the spot rate and ignore the three months forward rate. Take the six month forward. Which number you have to select? So we know that we know that we should always receive less foreign currency when we are going to get an income. So if you are going to divide by which number, we will get a lesser number. If a denominator is going to be a larger number, we'll, our answer will be a lower number. So 1.6809 is the number we have to choose because then only we'll get a lower answer. Pound of 5354270.45. So that's about what we will receive in the local currency. So now we'll see how the money market hedge will work. So the money market hedge we have to consider the spot rate okay and we have to consider this dollars in nine months time and we have to consider the interest rate this entire box we have to consider so we don't need to worry about the forward rates and all so we'll start see which is given the question is us so us is there and uk is there what we do is we go to their bank okay a us bank and we borrow okay and we borrow that money and we then transfer that money at spot rate today itself spot rate is today and we take it to, to, to uk in uk we are going to deposit will be like deposit in a bank and we earn some interest but the problem is in the foreign country borrowing we are borrowing it so we have to pay interest in our country we are depositing it so we will be earning an interest so this is about the money market hedge mechanism but what is this mechanism all about see when the foreign company is going to give us nine lakh dollars 
9 lakh dollars we will then repay the bank borrowing okay so the bank borrowing will be repaid in the uh, six months time when the foreign company gives us a payment the bank borrowing will be closed so we can't borrow 9 lakhs because if you borrow 9 lakhs today then we have to pay interest on that that will go to 9 lakh something like uh, 9 lakh 10,000 or something so that is not the right option our total borrowing itself has to come to interest plus the principal both should come to 9 lakh so so we should not be like borrowing 9 lakhs we should borrow a lesser amount okay so how much lesser amount we should borrow we should borrow a lesser amount which with interest becomes 9 lakh okay becomes 9 lakh so if you want to borrow in us the rate is 6.5 so it is 1 plus 6.5 percent but this 6.5 is the for entire year we just want a loan for six months so this will be like divided by two solve this you will get an answer so i'll solve the answer 9 lakh divided by 1.0325 so that is the interest plus so that is a principal plus interest one is the principal and 0 0.325 is the interest put together that is what 9 lakhs should be so how much money should we borrow we should be borrowing 8 lakh 71 670 okay that is what we have to borrow so we'll borrow this number at the spot rate so we'll take the spot rate here the same number is going to go from here it's going to go to the spot rate. We'll convert it. So, 8,71,670 has to be divided by which number? At the spot rate number. But as it's an income, we should receive less local currency. So, to receive less, less local currency, our denominator should be a higher number. So, we'll use 1.704 comes to pound 511.54. 3.8 so this number we have received it today itself but this can be deposited in a bank so if you are going to deposit in a bank what you will receive you will receive 511543.8 you will be like depositing it so the deposit would be in uk at 6% so you can but that 6% is for is for a year so we can't get it we can't get 6%. What we'll get is a divided by 2. So we'll be like totally receiving with the interest at the end of 6 months pound 526890. So this is the amount that we'll be receiving. Okay. So that is the end of uh, money market hedge. But now we'll again look at once more. So Assume that the six months has come now. What will happen? See, when the six months has come, we will close our deposit. We will receive this amount as our uh, income. But we have already borrowed money in US. This is the money that we borrowed in US. 8,71,670. With this, we would have paid an interest of plus 3.25%. So, this is the 6.5. So, for a year, we would have paid 3.25. Okay. The half of 6.5 that we have paid of interest. That interest, if you add, that will come to 9 lakhs. So, this 9 lakhs would be paid in the foreign country and the bank borrowing is closed. How it is closed? Because the foreign customer would have given us the 9 lakh dollars and we would have closed the bank borrowing. And in our country, we would have simply got this 5 lakh 28.90. So, sorry, 5 lakh 26,890. So, we should compare whether a money market hedge or a forward hedge is better how do you find that which as this is an income this is an income based problem wherever whichever hedge mechanism we use which provides a higher number or a higher local currency that is the better approach so we'll see what is the forward answer forward answer is 5 lakh 35000 427 this one is 5 lakh 26 890 so forward mechanism is much is much better than the money market hedge mechanism so we'll go on with the forward hedge okay so that is what you have to say we will select the forward hedge
so we can say like this select forward hedge as it provides more local currency income so that's about the problem here we have solved the money market hedge income so now we'll move on to the money market hedge expense so we'll work it out like this assume that we have to pay an expense in three months time but we are not sure like what will be the rate in three months time so what we do today itself we borrow at our home currency convert it at the today's spot rate and we then deposit in a foreign country once that three months time is over we will close that foreign country deposit and we'll make the payment to the customer and at our home currency we will also close the borrowing at our home currency and we will finish it off. So, both the deposit and the borrowing is closed, but we have converted the currency at today's spot rate. So, that is how the money market hedge for expense works. We will work out a problem. So, again we have a problem here. So, Liverpool must make a payment of 4,50,000 in 3 months time. The company treasurer has determined the following. The spot rate is 1.7, the 3 months forward is there, 6 months forward is there and we have a whole lot of interest rates. So he says, decide whether a forward contract hedge or a money market hedge should be undertaken. So as this is an expense, we have to choose whether it is a forward hedge or a money market hedge, whichever is lower, okay, whichever is lower in terms of the local currency, the local currency, okay. So, that is how it works. So, we will work out this uh, sum. We will start from the forward rate. So, the, the forward hedge will be 4,50,000 dollars divided by which number you have to take? It is a 3 month forward so we don't need to worry about the six month forward rate or the spot rate just think about the three month forward rate so as it is an expense we have to pay more okay so in terms of the pound we have to pay more of our pound so what happens is which number we should take if we take this number our answer will be less so we'll take 1.1.690 so that our pound answer will be the answer comes to 2,66,240 so that is our pound rate so the money market hedge works like this again we have to borrow at the local you have to borrow in local bank and we then take it and convert at the spot rate and then we have to take it to the US so that goes to here so we have to deposit deposit in the foreign country or in the foreign bank that is what we have to do so we can also create like this so this is US and this is UK, the local country. Okay. So we have two countries and let's see how this works. But even though you are going to borrow from the local country bank, you can't go through this stream while calculating the problem. You will not get the answer. You have to only again start from the foreign deposit and then bring it here. Okay. Then only you will get the answer. So, whether it is an income or a expense in terms of money market hedge, always start from the foreign country. So, in the foreign country, we have to make them a payment. How much? We have to make them a payment of 4,50,000 amount in 3 months time. This can be deposited. So, if we deposit, we will get an income. So, 4,50,000 plus interest if you put, that comes to like 4,70,000 means we don't need to make 4,70,000 to them. Okay. We just need to make how much payment? 4,50,000. So, 
the principal and the interest put together should come to 4,50,000. So, that is the principal plus the interest. So, what is the interest if you deposit in US? The interest you deposit in US is 5%. So, the principal and the interest both together should come to 4,50,000. But there is a problem here. We are going to do this in 3 months time. But the rates which are given here are annual rates. So, this number should be taken as 3 by 12. Okay. So, first solve this. Then you will get a, get an answer. So, how much we have to deposit? We have to only deposit 444 because at the 3 months time at 5% interest this 4 lakh this triple four triple four will automatically will become a 4 lakh 50 with that 4 lakh 50 we can pay the our us client okay our us uh, company so we have to deposit how much today we have to deposit just triple four and triple four so this has to be deposited today so what we'll do is we have to convert this we have to convert this in terms of today's currency so today's currency is a spot rate See, as this is an expense, we have to pay more local currency. So, which number will create more local currency? So, if you divide it by 1.7, it will create more local currency. So, the local currency will be 61.438. So, this is what you have to borrow from the local bank. Okay. So, go and borrow. 2,67,438 from your local bank. But if you borrow this, in 3 months time you have to pay interest. So, what is the interest? So, the interest will be this rate. So, if you are going to borrow in UK, your interest is 7.5. So, you have to borrow this. So, when you are going to make the, close the borrowing, you have to make it with the interest. So, interest will be principal plus interest of 7.5 for a period of 3 by 12. First solve this, then solve the overall answer. So, we will solve this one. 2,67,438 into 1.01875. So, when we solve this number, we get So, this is the money market hedge expense that you will incur. Okay. But if you are going to use forward, it will be like ending up with 266, 240. So, which is lower? Whichever is lower you have to select. So, the forward hedge seems to be a better mechanism. So, you can say, so, it is better to make forward hedge to avoid currency risk okay or if you want as it is low cost so the cost is less in forward hedge that's about the money market hedge okay so if you want i'll explain with another color so rule number one first borrow first make a planning to how much to borrow so, the borrowing should be equaling to 4,50,000, okay, which will be like paid in the 3 months time. So, you can't borrow 4,50,000 because when you deposit it, in 3 months time, the deposit would come to 4,60,000 or 70. So, you can, should not like deposit 4,50,000. What you should deposit is a smaller number. So, the interest should be adjusted. So, principal, div, so it should be the 4,50,000 is divided by principal plus the interest. So, the number comes to 44444. This is the number you have to deposit in the US bank. This has to be deposited today. So, it has to be like converted in the spot rate. The spot rate are two rates converted where the expense will be higher. So, when you use a lower denominator, your pound will be higher. This is an expense, okay. Because in future, you are going to pay a foreign client. So, it is an expense for you. This number has to be a higher number. So, in UK, you have to borrow the same number. If you borrow, you have to pay interest. The interest comes to 7.5% into 3 by 12. So, the total 
local currency that you will be like ending up to be paid for a money market hedge will be 272452 so that is how the money market hedge for expense work but the catch is this however you work you should always start with the foreign currency okay so whether it's going to be an expense or an income the money market hedge always works from the deposit or sorry the money market hedge always works from the foreign country so whether the logic flows from here to here or from here to here the problem numerically has to be solved only from the foreign country angle thank you very much for watching this video we have ended our currency chapter hope you have understood it thank you very much